Well, yeah, that's what I was talking about before. I've sort of refined my thinking, thinking a little bit about inward, outward and, and forward. Mm. But yeah, mm. so, so, you know, so, so inward is self is, is self compassion, sort of, you know, treat ourselves with kindness. Um, self disclosure is just revealing it or even just converting it to language. And then self distancing is, is zooming out and, and making sense of it. And, and I really do think that there is a systematic way to deal with this. The problem is, is that most of us never learn how to do it. Hmm. And so, and you see this, you know, one of my concerns is, is among younger people who seem to be getting just debilitated by negative emotions because they, they look, they, they, they feel a sense of, they feel a negative emotion. They feel a regret. They made a mistake. They, you know, and they think that there's something wrong with them because they look around and they feel like everybody else's life is so perfect that there's, that they're somehow broken. And, and that's, and that's debilitating. And that can actually lead them into dangerous mm. rumination. Mm. And that observation, is that linked or is that uh, amplified by the, by the social media where people end up posting a sort of positive sided yeah. elements of their life and there's a, people yeah. have a distorted perception of how others are doing are, are these connected i don't know but i think so hmm. um and I, I think that that it's it's that if you if you if you look at social media you would think that um that that individuals never have anything bad happen to them except that they have a political opponent who's a terrible person. Like that's the only negativity, <laughs> you know? So, so the so political discussions are entirely negative, but when you look at people's presentation of self, it's mm -hmm. almost uniformly positive. I have this idea. I want, I, I hope one of your, one of the many academics who've been on this show will hear this and, and do something. I, I want to know, okay, so here's my, here's my, here's my research project for you to figure out. All right. Here's what mm -hmm. I want to know. I want you, let's say something like Instagram. I want to know, I want someone to do, you can probably do this with some kind of AI. What do you do? Here's what you do. You take, you know, a, a, you know, a billion Instagram posts, uh, photographic posts. And what you do is you, 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 you reconfigure the images. So you take out the people. Mm -hmm. All right. And all you're doing is all you're doing is an evaluation of the weather in the background. And I'm convinced that you will have you, and then you say, oh, what proportion of the days are sunny, rainy, cloudy? All right. And then you, th my guess is that if you look at, you can do, you can, you can narrow it by geography. All right. You can do That's every right. post in Mumbai. All right. For, for, for three years. And, th and then you compare that to the actual weather in Mumbai for the last three years. And it's going to be like, oh, it never rains in Mumbai. <laughs> it's never cloudy. It's always sunny every single day. So, Fascinating. You're right. I, think I mean, I just right. think that I think that that I think that that that, that I, I, so so my, my true answer, honestly, so I haven't done the research and, and, mm -hmm. and some of the research on the effects of social media is very, very mixed. Mm -hmm. um, my own instinctive response is that it doesn't help. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't help in terms of in people doing the endless social comparison and the endless FOMO that um, um, that is some that, that is distracting and then sort of doesn't allow them to focus on what I think the evidence tells us really matters in life. 